to the races. Here we go. Um, Fast, have you ever played Uncharted? I have not. That's the game that's featured right now, playing the theme sound. And um, I started playing it for the, for the show, which is actually cool. I've never done multiple games at the same time. And now I have Spider-Man, Assassin's Creed, I've got Sleeping Dogs, I've got Uncharted, I'm going to have God of War soon, Red Dead, all of that. And they're all unfinished. And I've reminded it how great the game Uncharted 4 Thieves End is already, and I'm only like an hour and a bit in, two hours in or something. It's awesome. Uh, so good. You've played it? Oh yeah, that was the first and only Uncharted game I like beat a hundred percent on my own. Other ones oh. I was just watching my brother play. You have seen the other ones though, right? Yeah, yeah. It's such an a wonderful series. Uh, Ethan actually was talking to me about. I was he was asking me about it today, and I was like, dude, you got to see it. Like you absolutely have to pl- like see it, play it. So he found a bundle for cheap on PS4, so he's gonna get it. Huh. Um, hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast. I am your host G, and with me are is R is is Vass and Anthony. What is up, yo? Now, quick little housekeeping thing. We're gonna get right into it because for the past four weeks. I think five weeks, four weeks, five weeks. I forget when Casual first posted it, but we've been talking about this fucking top influential people or movies in the past two decades uh, because I thought it was a really good topic that he put on his Instagram. That's the Casual Movie Goer on Instagram. Uh, And we've had it there. We've brought it up twice. We haven't fully talked about it because we ended up getting distracted by other stuff. So that is going to be the bulk of this topic. Mm Mm-hmm. Another thing, I'm only going to mention one thing about the Snyder Cut that we're going to discuss. It's only runtime and what that may mean for the movie itself. And then third, after episode 100, we are taking a hiatus. I don't know for how long. We've got, so this is episode 95, four more after this, and we will be saying goodbye for the time being um, we don't know what's going to happen. Anthony's still going to be running the Instagram account the way he wants to run it. We just won't be doing anything podcast related. Um, I might do some the occasional review on YouTube. I'm not sure. Um, but we're just going to be taking a break. And given that it's the 100th episodic episode, even though we're technically at like episode 113 or whatever, but that's including the deep dives, this is kind of the 100th episode of your weekly show. And so that's going to be going down four weeks from now. So four weeks, yeah, four weeks from now. So what I'd like to propose to the people out there is because most of the news is basically the same, COVID sucks, everything sucks, everyone's miserable now, and there's just craziness going on, send us an email at the podcast at gmail.com and just send us a topic of what you would like us to talk about just for fun. We're obviously going to come up with our own stuff, but if there's anything you've ever thought of, it's like, hey, I wonder what their thoughts are on this TV show or this movie or this event or whatever, you can email us. You can also comment on one of the threads in uh, or at the F word. Um, I don't know if that's the most effective, but uh, you can also go on our Facebook and do that as well. That's the only housekeeping stuff. Now, Snyder Cut. We talked about it last week. It was pretty much the crux of last week's episode, Mm -hmm. Snyder Justice. I just found out, I didn't know this is how long it's going to be, but the Snyder Cut is four hours long, where the original Justice League was only two hours long. (laughs) In In my mind, knowing that, because I didn't know, I feel like it's unfair to compare the two. Because if I had, for instance, an hour to train for an event... And Vast trained for it for six months. Or maybe a better analogy is if I only had an hour to complete a task and Vast had three hours to complete a task, he is most likely going to complete it better than me given that he has the time. With all the accoutrements, there's no worry about uh, time restrictions, delays, how much it's going to cost per minute, any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I believe this for me this is just for me. 
I don't think we're talking about the same movie. I don't even think you can criticize the original Justice League outside of just the mess that it was on its own. But comparing the two, I think, is now silly because one's two hours long and one's four hours long. I'm pretty sure if they gave Joss Whedon four hours, he probably would have kept a good chunk of it. What do you guys think? I don't care who goes. Uh, Well, from my understanding, they said like I was a stupidly high percentage of the movie we saw was reshot so whatever i don't think it was entirely joss whedon's like fault that the movie was the way it was i'm pretty sure it was you know warner brothers wanted it to be that way so whoever they brought in no matter what would have made it that way but uh i do agree with you like they are two different movies that's what you know Zack snyder's been saying like the movie you saw doesn't reflect what he wanted it to be or what he wanted the next step of the dcu to be so I'm excited to see it uh, again. You know, they are two different movies. I hope this one is better. Uh, I have heard, like Zack Snyder did say, that his cut was four hours. I've heard kind of rumors as to whether it's going to be released as a full movie or like in parts, like a kind of mini series on HBO Max, because like they're putting more money into it, so they might be able to, I don't know, add more to it if they need to. But I'm excited to see. Honestly, the longer the better, just to... If it's the sake, not for the sake of being long, but just for the sake of, if you wanted this movie to be four hours, I'd like to see four hours of the movie. Okay, Bass? Um, you bring up a good point, how like Snyder had all this time to prepare and make his his product the best. Um, now, I'm not, I don't know at what point, when did is, Joss Whedon, what did he, did he take over for Snyder? Is that what happened, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before that was Snyder's cut, the movie that he screened for everyone and they didn't like it. So was he already technically done that version of what he had in mind? And then they just didn't like it for whatever reason. So they decided to bring in someone else for whole new reshoots, in which case it would kind of contradict what you said. So I don't know if that's the case or not. So I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I'm pretty sure it was after his daughter commit suicide. It was hard to, like, I don't think he actually ended up, like, I think he shot the movie, but I don't think he actually finished the movie. Okay. And then by that time, though, like, negative reactions of Batman vs. Superman happened, Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I think that came out in, like, 2016, and Justice League came out in 2017. Okay. So, I think it was, like, they were shooting Justice League, and then BVS came out, and Warner Brothers just had cold feet. Yeah, Yeah. Batman vs. Superman came out in 2016, Justice League, I'm pretty sure it came out in 2017. Yeah, so they would have been, like, back-to-back. So I'm pretty sure... I don't know if they show if he showed the full movie, because it sounded like he was finishing it up on his own time, from what he was mm-hmm. saying. Mm-hmm. Well, I okay. think the thing to, the major thing to consider, though, is even if it is a different movie and they had reshoots, under normal circumstances where tragedy didn't strike the Snyders, he still would have only been given a, a limited run time to be able to to have his movie so that it can go out. Because they have to consider how much time it's going to be in theater, how much turnover, and how much money, essentially, that they can get from this movie. That's why three-hour movies traditionally make less money mm-hmm. than, uh, than you know, an hour and a half. Because you have less showings per day because of that time, right? You have to do the time of the movie, the preparation time beforehand uh, for the theater itself, and then after. Um, so that's why I'm just like, we're, we're not even... It's like, yeah, they're the same actors and it's the same kind of deal, but it's like, yeah, it's not even fair because yeah, if they told Joss Whedon, it's like, here's four hours, do what you want. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what makes it so interesting for me now to think about it because, and, and not think about it, but even contemplate um, uh, comparing the two in, in any way, shape or form other than it's the same faces on there because yeah, of course he's got more time to add all these cool stuff. Mm-hmm. But I just hope it's not boring. I think it would be cool if they, if, since it's four hours, because everyone complained about the Irishman. Yeah. Um, that's a long, like four hours is a long time. So I think if they split it up, because everyone was bitching about the Irishman, I think it'd be a cool part one and part two. Well, mm-hmm. it was originally supposed to be, so I'm not sure. I think, I don't think he filmed part two or would have enough to even like finish the part two, because I'm pretty sure part two was with dark side actually like doing something not just kind of you know showing up at the end hmm. but it'll be interesting 
Uh, I, I'm kind of hoping for like a limited release as a series just because I feel like that'll just be easier to digest. Uh, you don't have to like take in the whole movie all at once and think, was this worth the wait? Was this better? You can watch it week to week and, you know, I can actually set up a story because if it's going to be four hours, I assume it's going to have a big story, which is what he kind of was going for. Right, like two movies worth in yeah. one shot. Yeah, that's going to be bold, though, with something like that, because you want to be in and you want to experience all the stuff. Like, I know, even for me, when I first watched The Irishman, the second time I watched it in one one go through, and I definitely enjoyed it better the first the second time than I did the first time, mostly because I was just in I was living in that movie for that time period. Um, I think with a movie like Justice League, there are probably some really big moments that you want to feel the emotion from the scene before to set you up for the next one and then put those two feelings together to equal the next scene. You know, like you, you really want that payoff. Like it's really hard for me to enjoy even, even the clips. Like even uh, when we talk about uh, Endgame, the portal scene on its own is dope as hell, but it's not even close to when I'm actually watching the whole movie. Even if I've watched it like 10, 15 times already, I love having the feeling leading up to it. And then the feeling after together, instead of just that, you know, however many minutes the clip is but yeah mm -hmm. i mean i'm i'm really going to be interested as well, just like you guys are just to see how this thing rolls out though um okay we're gonna do this finally <laughs> in the past two decades which two movies would you put up against each other for the most influential movie of the past two decades i don't think i said that grammatically like a human being would but i said it anyways so uh, our friend Casual Movie Goer at the Casual Movie Goer on Instagram had posed this question weeks ago, maybe maybe a month and a half ago, and he put Parasite up against Iron Man. Now, the <laughs> argument was Parasite was the culmination of all the foreign shows, all the foreign movies, everything that's come out in the past two decades leading up to it, which makes it most influential because of how long it's taken to condition a lot of us to watch the foreign content okay the other one was iron man just for the fact that it kick-started a universe now i think we may have brought it up a little bit but i am going to ask you gentlemen again mm -hmm. which of those two do you think is the most influential and why really quick i could start off uh as the only one out of us who has seen parasite i can say out of the two it is much better than iron man uh, it's a great movie, but it's been out for, like, two months. Or I guess, no, it's fucking, oh my god, it's June. Jesus Christ. It's been out for a while. Okay, it's been out for, like, five months, five, six months. Uh, it's a really good movie, but not influential in the fact that it's been out for six months and it hasn't really influenced anything yet. Uh, Iron Man kind of kick-started uh, the most successful movie franchise of all time. So I guess, yeah, Iron Man. Okay, Vass? Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it parasite so i definitely have to give it more to iron man because like you said it kickstarted an entire universe and changed the game for the superhero genre and i mean it's funny because the end credit to that was with uh, nick fury and uh and tony stark mm -hmm. and how true his words were at the time where it's like you know this is bigger than you could imagine kind of thing it, i'm paraphrasing at this point but it basically said that and like after you watch them all and you realize how true that statement was from the get go, like you got to imagine what these people had in mind and what it would have led to. So yeah, I definitely, you got to give it to Iron Man. And like Anthony said, not seeing Parasite, the fact that it came out just now, can it really be defined as that influential? Cause it, it just doesn't have that longevity that some other movies had even within the last year or two itself. So Yeah. For me, I'm going Iron Man as well, only for the for the fact of the matter. For me, the question is most influential, and to be influential, you have to influence. Mm -hmm. I think the conversation in the next 20 years, like 2040, I would not be surprised. Actually, I would put Parasite. I still haven't seen it yet, like an asshole that I am. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would put it as the most. And be, you could say because it was, you know, a monumental win at the Oscars. It will be talked about forever, and mm -hmm. it will spawn more and more content that people are going to watch. However, yeah. it's not there yet, which is where yeah. Iron Man 
it definitely supersedes it just based on the way that I'm taking the question, which makes more sense to me, where it's, if you're saying what's the most influential, that means you're asking what has it influenced? That being said, then, have you two picked a couple of movies, just two, maybe one or whatever that you feel have been the most influential to either pit against each other or are a really like very close or have you even just picked one the most influential in the past 20 or in the past yeah 20 years now what i thought was interesting when i when i was thinking about it too is 2020 isn't done yet even though we all wish it was it would just get the fuck out of here um (laughs) so would 20 or would two would 1999 count as that or are we going to just stick to the you know 2010 to 220 to 2020 I was thinking I mean, about that because I never thought about one it before. If you have one in 1999 that you like really want to use, I don't think anyone's gonna be like, mm, "Actually, yeah. that was in a year before." So no, yeah. good. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I was yeah. just I was just thinking about it. And I'm like, I, I think we it's actually tw- like 1999 to 2019 would be the act- the timeline. Um, but he had said 2000 to 2020, so I'm kind of honoring the rules that he kind of put mm-hmm. forth. So who wants to start? Uh, I can. Yeah. I've got a couple, like all in the same genre, all superhero movies, just because in my mind, that is the genre in the past 20 years that has actually grown the most and been influenced the most and actually, you know, dominated the box office. Uh, so for me, I have Spider-Man or Spider-Man 2, like one of the original ones, mm-hmm. The Dark Knight or The Avengers as being the most influential so my reasoning behind these picks is Spider Man and Spider Man Two. Like I know uh, X Men could also be kind of. I have I haven't seen any of the original X Men. I was never like really cared for the original X Men growing up. That's why. But I know those also like were a big deal for the superhero game. So if you're a fan of X Men, I'm not dissing them. I just haven't seen it. I can't really say. Uh, but you know, Tobey Maguire Spider Man and Sam Raimi Spider Man kind of took away, or continued to build off of that. Superhero movies don't have to just be cheesy and kind of you know stupid but they could have great stories great villains you know just everything that could actually make it be a success because i think spider-man was the top grossing film like at the time it came out if i believe entourage and was for a while so just to show that the audience actually really liked it and the fact that you know each movie went on to make a ton of money and made sony still a lot of money to this day because of the franchise uh, that's why I have Spider-Man, A, because I love Tobey Maguire, childhood nostalgia, nostalgia. The Dark Knight is the one I personally think is the most influential in the past 20 years, just because it took the whole superhero game and turned it into a, like, we had Chris Nolan, who was a super, you know, popular director, one who's, a guy who has all his movies are constantly doing better than that, or the last one. And, uh... I just think that the Dark Knight changed the game because Batman Begins was great, but the Dark Knight was dark, gritty. Uh, I believe it was the first superhero movie to have an Oscar winner. If I'm, am I correct? Mistaken? I think you are correct. Yeah. So even just getting like that, what do you call it? Acknowledgement from the movie industry that like this is a superhero movie, but that had the best uh, actor of the whole year is something insane. I think really bump the genre to not just being as many people today consider like kind of just a I don't know what they called it but like kind of a slack off thing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. something they never even considered that yeah that wasn't allowed to play at the big boy table Mm -hmm. and then my final one uh Avengers so as me and Vass said uh Iron Man like did kickstart the whole universe but Avengers was the final product they were really pushing for at the time like I'm not counting Endgame because this was that was like a later later step like Avengers was the first major stepping stone and they fucking nailed it. Like, in every aspect, the movie was great. Like, today's mm-hmm. standards, it's kind of cheesy. The costumes kind of look, you know, Cap's costume kind of sucks. But, like, at the time, what they did, no other movie studio, no other movie had ever done. And a lot of people didn't think it was possible what they did. So, And they still are dominating with that same formula. So that's why I pick those three. Uh, personally, I would say The Dark Knight, just because even today, like in 2020, people still talk about that movie they still compare every joker to heath ledger i'm sure as years go on heath ledger will always still be like the number one joker to our generation i know jack nicholson for you guys is more like that's who you no actually it would be um it would actually be mark hamill technically Mm. Mm -hmm. uh 
because we didn't have a Joker. Because unfortunately, mine and, and Vass's generation had the George Clooney, like the Joel Schumacher Batman. So we never got. Uh, luckily, we never got his version of the Joker, but we did have Mark Hamill in the um, in the cartoon. Yeah, and he was still going up until Arkham. What do you call it, Knights? Uh, yes, yes, he was. Yeah, but okay, enough of my rambling. Whoever wants to go up next. Vass? Um, I had Iron Man, of course, was one on my list already. Um, but I would say Lord of the Rings. Um, and all three of them were iconic for sure, but you could give Fellowship the credit for start kickstarting it all. Um, just that it did something very different with the fantasy genre at the time um, that no one really did. It was a massive feat. Peter Jackson filmed all three back to back like which has never been done i think he streamlined the motion capture at the time if not created it it was one of the you know pioneers behind it and it was just amazing and i think without that you wouldn't have the game of thrones you wouldn't have the chronicles of narnia you wouldn't have you know a lot of that type of genre that like a lot of those movies in that genre I think owe a lot to how Lord of the Rings paved the way. And so I, I think it's, that's why it deserves to be one of the more influential movies of the time. Do you have any other ones? Um, I was just trying to think through. Um, I think Inception, I, I would put as an influential only for the fact that it came about in a time when we didn't really have many original content coming out. I think it was a lot of, regurgitated stuff or you know source material from a book or what have you and inception coming in around 2010 i think was a nice break for everybody and it brought back a an original idea which is what it's themed around ideas and stuff like that and it made you start to think about that and the whole concept behind it it's like yeah you know what you some you were sort of experienced that in your own way uh day to day i guess you could say um as for the film industry, I, I didn't delve into it too quickly to see what else came about because of Inception, but I think I think it broke up a lot. I remember around that time, I think there was a lot of MCU movies coming out. There was a lot of all that kind of stuff coming out, and I think Inception kind of broke that streak a little and gave us something very different and very good, too, on top of it. So I would give it credit for sure. Really? Yeah, I didn't know Inception. Oh, yeah, 2010. That's cr- I still want to see Inception. Like I during quarantine is like when I mm-hmm. want to see it, but I had no. I thought it was an older movie, like not 2010. I was thinking like earlier 2000s. That's crazy. No. Nope. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a really good one. It's still it's still very very good. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Inception, Lord of the Rings, Spider Man, Dark Knight, and Avengers. Well, I had close to your guy, so I had Dark Knight on here. I had Lord of the Rings: The Fellowship of the Ring. Mm-hmm. And then I had Avengers on there mm-hmm. um, because of the fact that, yes, Iron Man started it, but they still didn't know what they had until the Avengers made it. That That's was fair. really the yeah. starting point. And really, it wasn't until the Dark World that they started putting together the Infinity Saga either. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that we can talk about is saying, oh, they had the foresight to do this. It's like, well, they didn't. They were just going one step at a time. And then they, you know they didn't stop after Thor of the dark world, even though it flopped and they introduced the infinity wars and then let's, let's push it further and further. So that, but the Avengers actually being able to do that model was huge and mm-hmm. arguably the most influential because it proved that universes are the way to go. Now, a lot of people have failed at that, but it influenced all the other places, just like the Lord of the Rings influenced people to be like, we need more trilogies like this. Yeah. And and also, like you said, Vass, we need this genre. People want this genre. Game of Thrones is another one that I would put as an influential um, show mm-hmm. if we were talking mm-hmm. TV shows, which oh, if, yeah. if, if time permits, we could throw that in there too. But people didn't know they wanted a fantasy drama or a fantasy adventure drama, whatever, mm-hmm. with dragons and mystical things and White Walkers and all that until Game of Thrones came out. That's true. And then it came out and it's like, wow. Same with Harry Potter. Nobody knew they wanted a little kid and his friends at a at his wizarding school to be a thing. And then it was yeah. massive. Now, the books were huge. Oh, yeah. But even just in terms of film in general. Um, yeah. 
so yeah, those are a lot. Those are those are really good ones. The Dark Knight was another one. Like I said, I had on my list because it was yes, Iron Man had come out that same year, and it was really good. But the Dark Knight was really like just like Batman Begins gave us the damn like these these things can be really serious and really grounded. The Dark Knight was like not only can they be grounded, but you can get Oscar winning performances out of it. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and then. So the other ones I had on my list, if we are including 1999, I'm putting in Fight Club and I'm putting in The Matrix. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and and I'm putting in Fight Club. It was 99 because uh, David Fincher was part of the original guys with Tarantino that came up in the indie film scene. Mm-hmm. And Fight Club was one of those movies that um, is from a book. It bombed at the theaters. Nobody understood it, and it ended up becoming a giant, giant cult movie. And ever and like it is a like it's still again top top five easy best movies for me. Uh, and so I think it influenced a lot of movies that it helped really push the indie genre out of the indie, if that makes sense. Like Tarantino made it really. He broke ground with indie directors in general, and I think Fincher really took that forward because then Tarantino became his own beast where Fincher was doing his thing. The Matrix, I would put easily as the most influential, and I could say maybe the most, but really one of those top 10 most influential movies of all time because of the, the CGI, the slow motion, you have visionary directors. You have an incredible story, an incredible script. It was like, it was just like when Keanu Reeves is on that roof and he's like, whoa, when Morpheus jumped across, like everybody was like that. Yeah. And every single movie after for the longest time wanted to do that mm-hmm. to the point where not even the Wachowskis weren't even able to do Reloaded and Revolutions, was it called? I believe so. The... Like, I haven't seen it, but Revolution sounds yeah. right. Yeah. Revolutions like is the one, the, the, the anyway the sequel ones, they weren't even to make make those as good as the first one, you know. Like they had the CGI, they had all of that stuff, but by that time everybody was already doing it. Mm-hmm. So that's only for talking ninety nine. Um, I I wanted to kind of do similar to what uh, Casual did, where he picked a foreign film against a very popular one. So I picked Avatar. Okay. Because of the tech, like the technology of it, yeah. um, it was like in terms of like the three D, what what James Cameron was able to do. It's it, if I can't pick the um, if I can't pick the Matrix in terms of CG, I can definitely pick Avatar because despite what you think of that movie, it is still gorgeous, mm-hmm. and like it was shot three D proper. I remember it to this day in the theater watching it and being like, holy shit, you know. It was it was so well done. This like the CGI was like literally coming off the screen, or sorry, the 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 three D was coming off the screen. All yeah. of that. So if I can't pick the Matrix, I'm definitely picking Avatar. That's 2009, and I'm torn between these two movies because I love them, and also it's these two movies have been ones that I know a lot of mainstream people that aren't big into foreign films have seen. And one is 2002's Hero with Jet Li. Oh, yeah. And the other one is 2003's Old Boy. Now, I'm going to bring up Old Boy because there was two versions of it. The Josh Brolin one, no good. Okay? The one in question is from 2003. And the director is Park Chan-wook. It is unreal. It's from South Korea. The 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 movie had one of the greatest single shots or single tracking action shots. It was in a hallway with the main character, okay? Um and he's got a hammer. And it was like gorgeous. Still to this day unbelievable and this was in 2003. Okay? And not only was it like that, it has one of the most eye-opening twists at the end of it, which I won't say what it is because I you people who hasn't seen it has to see it. And I think that is a movie because of how many people that typically aren't into foreign films have seen. 
and it helped bring more people to be aware of it because I've recommended it to people and a lot of people have like seen it and they said I didn't know if I'd liked if I would like um, a foreign show with subtitles or you know whatever but they loved old boy and it's like it is a trip when you see it you will be like oh my lord okay um and then the other one is hero because jet lee in 2002 was like massive and it stars a, a young donnie yen who is now you know one of the best out there in terms of the action movies and martial art it's like like he's been able to to carry that forward after jackie chan and jet lee have been you know they've gotten older mm-hmm. um and jet lee being in there huge star and it's just it is one of the most beautiful movies i've ever seen not only does is the choreography unbelievable like if you ever wanted to see fight choreography done in like if someone were to say what do i watch to help me understand when someone says choreography tells a story, right? Mm-hmm. Just to give them an introduction, I would tell them go watch Hero with Jet Li because every single fight scene in there, it's like you're watching this dance happen and it's visceral, it's high paced, but it just flows so perfectly. And I'm trying, like, when I think about it, I think it influenced what what these movies influence going forward and i think a lot of it is the fact that um it, it really brought the classic style like that because crouching tiger hidden dragon was a big movie for sure for a lot of people but hero was i felt at least especially for me but i also started to notice it more and more there was more choreo where there was more emphasis put on choreography of fight scenes and the whole idea of telling a story with them I'm so, just watching uh, the those... trailer right now. Did Quentin Tarantino uh, produce the movie? Because it said brought to you by Tarantino. He was involved with it for sure, yeah. Okay. I don't know to what extent his production is, because a lot of times it might even just be, like we've talked about before, like Steven Spielberg gets a lot of credit for just suggesting, don't do that, do this. It's a simple like five-minute conversation, and yet he gets producer credit. Um, I believe he was more involved than most, though. Okay. Like then, then like a Steven Spielberg taking a phone call, but uh, yeah, it is like it still it's gorgeous. Everything about it is gorgeous. The story is just beautiful. There's one scene with just with Jet Li and Donnie Yen, and oh man, like <laughs> it, it's just you're just sitting there and you're just stunned watching it. So There's a lot of like anyways, cool yeah. scenes. And this trailer I'm seeing right now, like, dude, I'm telling a you, whole like, barrage of arrows coming. Yeah. Like, mm. That was like the that was the money shot in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you'll notice a lot of really prominent uh, actors in the movie as well uh, when you watch it too. Like, you'll be like, "Oh, I recognize this person from here, and this person from here, and this person from here." It has like a and, ghost uh, of uh, Hiroshima vibe, not to be like that one guy. Oh, they're both you know samurais, but like. Oh, Shushima. Just the, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah it's a, well, it, it is like, samurais. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's great because it's got a lot of political intrigue in there. It's got lots of, like, there's there's this, um, you know, the, the, it's, the storytelling weaves so many different things together. And by the end of it, you actually have to watch it two or three times. It took me two or three times to really understand what was happening because there's a lot of really cool small details in it. Okay. And it makes like, and when you when it clicks and when you get it, you're just blown away. So, yeah, and it's got one of the most beautiful scores I've heard ever. Unbelievable. Uh, I had a question so, for you because yeah. uh, just I saw a fact online. And it was about Fight Club. Did you? Did either of mm. you two have the Fight Club DVD? Mm-hmm. Yes. Are you talking about uh, the Drew Barrymore thing? The Never Been Kissed? Yeah, that one. Was that real? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I thought yeah. that was pretty cool. Just for oh, context, uh, if you had the Fight Club DVD and you played it, it would show uh, Never Been Kissed title screen for the first like 30 seconds before going Fight Club. I just didn't know mm-hmm. if it was real enough. That's actually pretty cool. Did any of you guys like get mad? It, like, What was your yeah. reaction when you saw it for the first time, if you remember? Oh, it was, it was years after for me. Vast? Oh, okay. you... Wait, Fight Club? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Never Been Kissed I kind of like remember. flash. I can't remember. To be honest, yeah, it's all good. Mine was like 
I was living I was living in Calgary at the time, so it was like 2010, and by that time I already see the movie like 20 times. So it was one of those things where I just happened to look at the right time, and then I paused it. Yeah, it was it was awesome, and it's such it's so fitting for that movie, just because of the way that movie is. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so I guess if I were to say, I would still put oh, I, I guess from the whole my whole rambling on about hero and old boy, I would I still think I'd put old boy on top, because if we were to talk influential foreign films, I think old boy really helped push a lot of that to the forefront because of how unbelievable that story is, how unbelievable the action choreography is and how a lot of people have been taking that one shot, that one single tracking shot and, and using that as a template for a lot of stuff. Um, and then the other one, like I said, if you guys are picking, if Anthony, let's say you go with Avengers and yeah, I'll go for avatar in terms of the technology itself. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, Lord of the Rings is another one. It's amazing. Like we said, dark Knight and all that. Now I don't know, which ones we'd pit against each other because really I think this is an impossible question to answer. Mm-hmm. Basically. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, like, you know, cause we never even mentioned horror. We never really mentioned much yeah. for comedy either. Yeah. That's you'd have true. to break down each genre and kind of put it that like that. And yeah. I will say, uh, whoever the fuck is doing what's Ari Aster. I think he's killing horror right oh, now. Oh, Ari Aster. Yeah. Yep. Ari Aster. Agreed. Oh my god. I'm looking forward to seeing Oh, he's done a couple other ones. He's he did the Strangers. Or the Strange Thing with the Johnsons. Okay. Like he's Do you done... know what's sad about that though? He's mm-hmm. done with horror. Really? Yeah, he said he's done with horror. He's gonna be um I think he said he's doing a comedy next. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, right. honestly, yeah. like if it actually like affect if it affected him to like work on these movies, it makes sense. I'm not gonna diss the man. Oh yeah, four yeah. hour uh, nightmare comedy film. There you okay. go. Hmm. Yeah, um, I, I think he had mentioned in an interview because after I watched Midsummer recently, I went on a tear of just watching a lot of his interviews because, like you and Anthony, you and I love Hereditary. Bass, have you seen Hereditary? I have not. Good. God bless you. But it's it, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Like it it is absolutely unbelievable. Um, and it's just still to this day a fucking tragedy that that movie never got as much love at the Oscars. Mm. Um, ex- especially Tony Collette. Like that's just a performance of a decade. I don't care what anybody says. Um, anyways, but really to this guy's credit, he does his two horror movies, knocks it out of the park, and then goes and works on some other stuff because he pretty much doesn't want to get pigeonholed. Is what. I understood from some of his interviews. He wants to be able to dip his toes into everything to be a more well-rounded artist, which I thought was a really great way to look. You know, that is, uh, I'm sorry. I just thought I fucking, I did not realize that. I don't know how I didn't, the wife or the mom in hereditary played the girl in knives out. Tony Collette. Yeah, man. Oh, that's why she she was so familiar. She was the, uh, uh, she was like Tony, I think. Or she was like, yeah. Fuck, a type. She was the she, she was Don Johnson's wife that everyone thought was just Joni, a Joni, not like Tony. Just, Joni. That was her character. Yeah, Joni. Yeah. Yeah. I think she was Don Johnson's wife in that. Either way, like she was the one that nobody really liked. Like yeah. she she was not actually part of the family in a way. But yeah, she was so good in that too. She's good in a lot of stuff. Even the like crap that she was in. She was in Shaft years ago. Like years and years ago. Do you remember that, Vass? Oh yeah. It's true. Yeah, she was uh she was Diane Palmieri. Palmieri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah man. Busta Rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually that's that was such a good movie. I still like watching it to this day. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. I, I like I said. I don't know if we've accomplished much, but I think most of this stuff, like it's it's really cool to look at all these movies because all of them have influenced stuff. We haven't talked about the horror stuff because there are movies yeah. that have been influenced because of horror, but. I would honestly say that maybe more non-horror movies have helped horror movies because the ones that have been coming out lately, like they're on a different level. Like they have that horror aspect to them, but they're just unbelievable stories. You know, like if you were to look at really great stories like Memento from Christopher Nolan, his very first one, I think that's a, that's a wonderfully influential movie. 
Like that, I think move that has influenced so many people, and it put Christopher Nolan on the map. And Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan, as a director, and his work has influenced so many people, just like Tarantino did mm-hmm. in the early '90s. You know, and then going forward, like the the cinematic universe is also influenced, and so on and so forth. Like it's just, it's it's really hard because even comedy. Look at a guy like Jordan Peele. He did yeah. comedy for so many years and then came and went into the horror genre and like just stomped on it. And it was so like he put his his mark. So now like if he sticks to doing horror, great. But like we already know he does comedy very well, like very well. And we know that he can do horror like in like nobody else. Mm-hmm. You know, well, so I was checking out his uh, Twilight Zone series after I finished up Black Mirror. I don't know if I, I might have talked about that on the show. And while it's not a good, it's not as good, like not nearly as good as Black Mirror. It's still pretty interesting, and he has a couple great episodes actually in the Twilight Zone. Oh, was that it? I thought you were going to um, say yeah, more. Yeah, no, honestly, that, I don't know. I could have gone on more, but it's just like, <laughs> I think like, I said it. He just has I a bunch of them. Uh, I only have the one. <laughs> like I'm pretty, I'm pretty sunned for it, boys. Okay, I'm damaged. I'm like fucking Anna, Anna oh God, Skywalker at the end of episode three. Ah, oh, and who had the high ground? Uh, oh, fuck the, the sun. sun. <laughs> the sun. Watch out for that heat stroke. That's okay. Yeah, watch out for that wind, too. I don't know where everybody else is. First, I hope everyone's been safe and, like, taking care of themselves and everything. But, man, where we are, it has been windy like crazy. It's like it's been going oh, out yeah. of its way just to be windy any chance that anybody has to get outside. I'm so today, really not. Today was actually very nice, though. It calmed the F down. Well, you've been outside all day, so yeah, you would know for sure. I'm mm-hmm. stuck looking at the trees, right? Which isn't the best gauge because trees will blow even if you just a person goes blows on them, depending yeah. on the size of the tree. But yeah, so I don't know. Um, I guess a couple last things because there is no definitive answer to this one. But if you do have your thoughts on what the most influential movies are, you can use twenty two thousand, sorry, to twenty twenty, or you can go. Uh, 1999 to 2019 mm-hmm. either one but if you do let us know either in the comments in the video below or you can email us like i said at the effort podcast at gmail.com and which ones do you think are the most influential put them up against each other and, and then see right it, you girls could very well be parasite again for me i think anything in the past five years it's really hard to gauge even a movie like endgame for instance and infinity war because yeah. i would say the first Avengers is still more influential than those. Oh, for sure. You know, for the reasons that like, we don't know what's going to happen because Endgame and infinity war might've come out just enough to cap off the whole superhero craze. And then that's it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it, it could have very well been it, you know? So who knows, but uh, it'd be cool to see what everyone else thinks. Um, the only other thing I had is, where the frick is it? I had some notes. Mm. And here we go. Okay. Uh, PS5 concept design. Now, PS5 has was supposed to have their showcase yesterday because today is Friday. So they would have had it on the 4th of June, which was a Thursday. In lieu of everything that's been going on recently, I think they did the smart thing. And mm. they have postponed so they're going to postpone and reveal their stuff however there has been a concept design i don't know if anyone's seen this but you can see it on the playstation facebook and if it's right if these are what it looks like if this is what the ps5 is going to look like i am so down for both of them the white version and the black version for now i'd say take it with a grain of salt because i'm looking on the playstation facebook and i just don't see anything it could very well. I don't know. Like, like it See, could and this be, is but... where I got it. Because, like, I'm on the official I just pulled these, like you one. said. Like, if... Did you go to PlayStation 5? Because that's where I found these. It said PlayStation 5 added six new photos. That was April. That was back in April. So this it was an older post. But I, I've never seen this concept design before. I would say... And... I don't think PlayStation 5 is official, though. It seems like... No. I just don't know. Well, like, shit. I don't think PlayStation would have, like, I don't think they have, is there a PlayStation 4 official page? Because if there is, it's very likely it could be. But... Fair. Yeah. I don't know. All I know, though, is that it is pretty awesome. 
like that if that is the design and i and i really hope like that it's close to that because that is a that is a perfect like um that is a perfect design for controller and system it's like when you get the keys to your car and the 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 keys in the car kind of match Mm -hmm, exactly i so apparently that photo uh is like it's a leak of what it's supposed to look like is what they're saying so it could be true because uh yeah i it's not the legit page but it had like an article that it linked it to saying oh event date reportedly leaked okay. and that was true so early june which was going to be right and that was may 16th they posted the article love it okay so yeah no that could, love it, it. Look like okay. that. it's pretty good I think it's great. Like both versions of it look awesome, and it makes sense that it, especially because they released the controller. Like it, it seems, and I love how they they're kind of taking what they did. If this is to be true, they're doing what they did with the PS3, where they allow you to stand it up or lay it down. Mm-hmm. And well, it looks like stand the standing it up. So up. And breathe. True, but I mean, it looks like they're providing the support with that cap that looks like it opens. Like that one photo looks like it kind of the top part kind of lifts up and allows you to, to like create a stand for it, um, I think. Or on this angle, it's just built that way for both. Well, maybe it's just built that way. Anyways, either way, both versions look unbelievable. And if they're close to this, then wow, take all of the little money that I have. Okay, that's it. That's all I got, gentlemen. Uh, anything on your end? Uh, wear sunblock. <laughs> yeah. Where's sunblock? Vass. Nothing new on my end. Oh. All okay. right. Um. Oh wait, this just in. Literally, this just in. Okay. Uh, John Favreau just said that um, when the date for what is this? John Favreau confirms the Mandalorian season two release date. Okay. I'm just reading through this right now. Just bear with me. Um, they finished photography before the lockdown. They were just working on the tech. Give me a date. Come on. 2000 visual effects shots. Sure. Awesome. Wait a minute. Why doesn't it say a date? This, I fucking hate these so much. This is comicbook.com because I'm looking at the same fucking thing. Comicbook.com. Yeah, they, they don't say anything. No. It just says that in October. So, as planned on Disney Plus in October. Well, okay. Thank you, comicbook.com. Well, is... What would we do without you? To give yeah, us that groundbreaking update that it's still coming out in October. God bless. Well, that's uh, that's it then. Thanks, comicbook.com, for that little timbit of somewhat semi-useless information. Um, yeah, I'm glad we finally got to get through this topic. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. And like I said, it is a it is one that will never have a definitive answer. Um, but I think it's one that's really interesting to think about because there's so many different levels to something like influence, uh, depending on who you look at, who you follow and who your favorite, what your favorite movies are, 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 sorry, our, um, so again, email us or drop a comment in the video and let us know what your most favorite influential movies or which movies you think are the most influential um you can find me on twitter at the f word g you can email us at the f word podcast at gmail.com make sure you're following the f word podcast on instagram even after our 100th episode where we go on hiatus it'll still be up and running so you can get all the facts that you need and the lazy canadian on instagram as well and until next time i'm g i'm anthony and i'm vass and we are out Thank you.